everybody. Welcome to Finding Love, the podcast about dating and love and romance in the middle of life. I'm Nancy Bruce. Uh, Let's talk about flags. Let's talk about red flags, white flags, and green flags. That is my flag system. Um, In between the red and the green, I have white. And that is what I want to talk to you about today. I read this really great quote on Instagram last week, and it said, I want to marry the person I didn't have to give a million chances to because they appreciated me the first time. I... I think that's great. And I, and I agree. I do not want you to give a million chances to someone. Now here's, here's one thought that we do have to give each other chances sometimes. Like we do have to, there, there is a a level of grace, um, involved in patience involved in all of the relationships we have. We all mess up. We all say the wrong thing. We all do the wrong thing sometimes. We all regret our words and actions every once in a while. And that is just part of being human. And the the only way to have relationships that last for a long, long time is to is to have a bit of forgiveness and grace built in to those relationships. I mean, you know, whether it's uh, your your romantic partner, whether it's a friendship, whether it's people in your family, you just, we all know this, right? And so you can't take a hard line with everybody all the time. And what you hope is that not everybody's taking a hard line with you all the time because you're going to need some forgiveness too. You know, I've got friendships that have lasted, gosh, 40, 50 years. And we've been with each other through ups and downs and and the good times and the bad times. And there have absolutely been moments where you say, well, she didn't mean to say that, or, you know, that, that, that happened, but let's overlook it. That was a stumbling block. And that's just the way to have long-term relationships with anyone, with any human being. You're going to give a little grace and hopefully you're going to receive a little grace. So I'm not trying to say that you need to take a super hard line with every single man you meet, with every single possible love connection that you have. And if he doesn't meet all your criteria or say exactly the right thing and do the right thing all the time, then he, it's a no, it's a no go. Um, but this notion of don't give someone a million chances. Yeah. Let's just recognize when boundaries are crossed. And, and that's what gets me to, to the flag system. And I feel like, um, if you're anything like me, you are a person who at some point or another started ignoring red flags. And I, I mean, I definitely did that. I ignored red flags. I would just pretend I didn't see them. I would just be like, that didn't happen. I would pretend to myself. I would lie to myself and pretend that that didn't happen. And I didn't see that red flag. Um, and but it starts with being really aware of what you think a red flag is. So, so let's, let's talk about the flag. So a red flag is an absolute boundary and it's a healthy boundary and we all have healthy boundaries and we should honor those boundaries all the time. A red flag is a hard pass. It's a, it's a thing that you will not tolerate. You do not want that thing in your experience. You know that by now you're in the middle of life. You know yourself that's what a red flag is. A green flag are those things that really light you up and make you smile. Those are the things about a person that you want more and more of. You say to yourself, oh, I want more of that. Bring that on. That was great. So green flags are all systems go. The white flags, I think, are the place where so much of the dating experience is going to happen. And I think of white flags as a time to pause and consider a white flag is just a moment of reflection. That person has done something or said something that you weren't expecting. It might be a little new for you. You're not sure how you feel about it, but you're not going to write him off right away. You're also not just going to ignore it and pretend it didn't happen. A white, a white flag is your opportunity to pause and consider. Because remember, if you're dating in the middle of life, you have been down this road a few times before right? And so you are open to new experiences, or at least you're open to looking at things in a new way. That is really one of the secrets to success. And when it comes to finding love in the middle of life, you need to be open to something new, whether it's external or it's internal. In other words, a new way of that, that person that you're, that you're with is acting and behaving or, or saying or doing, and a new way that you're responding to it. 
So you might have some internal inventory to go through. You know, how do I really feel about that? Geez, I wasn't expecting that. Well, how did that land? You know, don't write it off right away, but also don't just ignore it. Pause and consider. And that's why really paying attention to how you feel as you date, that's why it's so important. I mean, you know, it, it's when you're younger, when you're, when you're in your 20s and 30s and dating, um, red flags seem to be less important or they were for me anyway. I mean, I dated a guy when I was in my 20s. I dated a guy named Brian and he... I met him in Cleveland, which is where I'm originally from. I met him right after I graduated from college. And he was this angsty, you know, kind of hard-edged artist. And he was just so cool, I thought. He was, oh, he was the coolest guy. And he, and he, um, his art was very, um, it was very graphic and it was very large. He used to paint on large found objects. And he, he was just really just filled with angst. And I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. He would just like smoke cigarettes one after the other and drink whiskey and paint until all hours of the night wearing his headphones, listening to this like loud music. And I thought, oh my God, he's so cool. This is my artist boyfriend. And I, in fact, we were, we moved in together and we decided to move to Chicago. That's how I ended up in Chicago. I ended up in Chicago because Brian, who was my boyfriend at the time, did not want to go to Virginia where I was accepted um, in the graduate program at the University of Virginia, and nor did he want to go to Berkeley, California, where I was on the wait list. Instead, he wanted to go to Chicago. I remember my parents at the time saying, you're going to pass up graduate school for this, this relationship? And I was like, oh, but I'm in love. I'm in love with Brian. I have to go with him. And so I went to Chicago, and um, Brian and I got a, a loft apartment in Chicago, gosh, when we, I mean, it was, it, when we were there, it was like our loft apartment was $300 a month. I mean, it was just really back in the day. It's actually an exact location where today the Soho House of Chicago is built. Today, the, that, that corner of Randolph and Green, that's where I used to live in a $300 a month loft. That is now the Soho House. So that's how that area has changed. But I, I lived with Brian and he painted and he drank and he smoked and he was, I mean, it, that relationship was littered with red flags. There were just, there was nothing but red flags. It was just a doomed relationship with a guy who had no interest in ever getting married, settling down, having children. I mean, he told me that. And, you know, I wanted that. I, I wanted a family and I wanted, um, one day, not exactly, you know, then, but I definitely wanted one day to get married and I definitely wanted to have kids one day. And he made it very clear that that was not what he wanted at all. And, and yet I stayed, right. I just, I just ignored the red flags. And, you know, I, I think back to that time now and I think, well, you know, I was in my twenties and in your twenties, you're taking a lot of risks and you're not really sure what you want, but I don't know if that's it. I think that what it really was. And I think that what it is even today for some of you who are in your 40s, 50s, 60s, um, there is really very much a scarcity mindset that goes along with dating. I think for women, that is very true. That feeling of, well, this is my last chance. You know, this guy is the one. And, and if not him, then no one. You know, there's that, there's that feeling of don't pass up what you have for the hope of something that really makes you happy, but you don't know when or when it will come or if it will come or who it's going to be. And so that, that all comes back to scarcity mindset. You know, if you were a person who truly believed in abundance, who truly believed that there was just a never ending store of abundant love coming your way, you would never settle for, for second best. Never. Why would you? When you, if you knew, wow, hey, the, the, the better love story is coming, so I'm not going to stick around for this one, this one that makes me feel sad and lonely and filled with doubt or that, my, I, that I've got to change what I want to, to meet this guy's needs, you would never settle for that. But So it, it, I think it does come back to that scarcity mindset. And, and I had it when I was in my 20s. And, and luckily, I got rid of it at some, at some point along the way on my journey of self-awareness and you know wanting a better life for myself. I started really believing in this notion that the, um, 
that that life was filled with abundance and I was going to have the love that I wanted and deserved and it would it would show up one day and I'm just going to keep believing until it does and I'm really glad that somehow that message really took root and grew in my mind and in my spirit because without it I would have definitely settled for second best I would have I would have I mean of, of the men I dated and the men that I, um, that broke up with me or that I broke up with, none of those men were really interested in the kind of love and the kind of life that I really wanted. So, you know, I, I, I share this with you to say, really know what your flags are, know what those red flags are, know what the green ones are, because that's also just as important. The things that you really love, don't, don't dismiss them and don't, and you know, don't, don't say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's just part of, you know, what a relationship is. No, if there's a green flag going on, love it, pay attention to it, celebrate it, applaud it, tell the person that you love it. You know, the more energy that you give out, to that green flag, the more green flags that are going to come your way, right? So, so pay attention to the green flags. Also pay attention to the red flags. Don't convince yourself they don't exist. Don't convince yourself they don't matter. Don't have a scarcity mindset and think that you've got to take the red flags along with the, with everything else, because there's only so many chances that you're going to get for love and don't pass this one up. Don't buy into that story. And, and also pay attention to those white flags and give yourself the moment to pause and consider and not make rash decisions and not write somebody off just because maybe you're, he, that person is offering you something new or you're feeling a new way about something. So red, white, and green, those are the flags. Now that we're talking about this, I want to get a couple of other terms straight, um, straight for myself. And, and also, you know, and I, and I invite you to, to write in and, and tell me what you think about all this and, and ask questions and let me know if there's anything else you want me to chat about. But I think it's really important getting, getting all these things straight in your mind as you date, um, it's, and, and as you look for love in the middle of life, it's important so that you know how you think and how you feel about these things. And so you're not taken unawares. But a couple of weeks ago, we talked about ghosting. And I really think it's important to understand the difference between ghosting and what I would call just flakiness and what I would call a non-connection. So ghosting, ghosting is obviously a red flag, right? It's, it's, a ghosting is when, when someone is, was there and then poof, he's no longer there and you don't know what happened. You know, you had a connection, maybe you, you've been texting for a long time, or you've even been on a date or two. There has been some kind of a connection. You've shared parts of yourself. You've shared stories with him. He's shared with you. Maybe you were even intimate or, and, and or even if you weren't intimate, there was a connection and there was an assumption that you would see this person or hear from this person again, but poof, they're gone like a ghost. That's what ghosting is. And, you know, like I said, ghosting is definitely a red flag, although it doesn't even matter because they're gone anyway. So la-di-da. Um, flakiness is some where a person cannot be bothered to follow up with you, cannot be bothered to even appear to be reliable, cannot be bothered to say, hey, that was really fun last night. I'd love to see you again. Or, um, you know, I want to make sure you got home safely. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you a call tomorrow or I'll give you a call next week. That is just real flakiness. If a person cannot even be bothered to be reliable in any way. And here's what I want to tell you about that. That is the tip of the iceberg. When a person is flaky while you're dating him, forget it. Forget it. It was like, I think I told this story a couple, a few weeks ago about the guy that when I was living in LA and I was living in West Hollywood and I was supposed to have a, a drink with a guy who lived in Brentwood, which is not that far away. I mean, I understand in LA there's traffic and so you never know. I mean, that little drive could possibly take an hour depending on the time of day. But he, he canceled like within an hour of the date and he just said, I'm just too tired. I'm just too tired. I can't. I was like, Okay. That is flakiness and it's the tip of the iceberg and I never, I never had anything to do with that guy again because I thought I don't want to date a guy like that who's going to leave me hanging, you know, an hour before a date because he's too tired to get into his car and drive. Please, please. So flakiness, believe, believe what he's telling you. You know, there's that great Maya Angelou quote. Um, 
when someone shows you who they are, believe them. But the full quote goes, when someone shows you who they are, believe them the first time. That's, that's the important part of that quote. Believe them the first time, not the 20th time, you know, not five years in, believe them the first time. So that guy from Brentwood showed me and I believed him. And that was the end of that. So that's ghosting, that's flakiness. And then there's another category. And I do think that this is when people, because a few women have been writing, writing to me in the last week and talking about ghosting. And I, you know, I thought we were going to see each other and then nothing happened. And I, I feel like I've been ghosted. A non-connection, I think, is what they're talking about. It's not really ghosting. Because again, ghosting is when you actually have some kind of an established interaction with someone, some kind of an established agreement. You know, you expect to see them again, and then all of a sudden they're gone. A non-connection is just when nothing really clicked. It wasn't a match. Maybe you texted a little bit. Maybe you even met for a cup of coffee or a walk or a cocktail, and, and, and then, there, then there was nothing. That's really a non-connection. So I don't want you to be telling yourself the story that you've been ghosted here and there and everywhere. And it's just, you're ghosted all the time and you're sick of dating and your online apps are crazy and you're not going to do it because there's no good guys out there because they all are ghosting you. What you might actually be experiencing are just a series of non-connections, which is okay, which is going to happen. Think about it. Like not everyone's going to be a connection, nor should they be. So if something peters out, if there's a few text messages and then nothing happens, um, you never hear from that person again. If there are, you know, some follow-ups to your profile and then they're gone. Um, even if you meet, even if you meet and, and, and they don't, they don't follow up after the meeting, eh, that's a non-connection. There was this one time when I was dating in Seattle, this is right before I met David and I met a, a guy at a restaurant. I, it was a fix up, a mutual friend fixed us up and I met him at a local restaurant at the little bar of the restaurant to, for a little meeting and we sat down and we each had a glass of wine and I, and I swear that meeting did not last more than 45 minutes. I could tell right away that I was not attracted to this guy. That was not going to change, but I was nice about it. Of course. Um, we finished our drinks. We had a nice little chat. And at the end of it, I think I said something like, you know, it was nice to meet you. And I thought that was pretty much the, the message I was sending was this was it, but it was, thank you very much. Thanks for the glass of wine. And it was nice to meet you. And then I went home and I, he contacted me and I, and I think I even sent him, he texted me and I think I sent him a text back that's just said something about, you know, I'm not really available. And I thought, again, this is the message. Well, this guy texted me and called me for like weeks, for I think four weeks. And at a certain point, I just stopped answering because I, I didn't want to engage him. You know, that was the message I was sending. I, I don't want to engage you. And he sent me a text finally, and he said something like, well, I guess this is what it means to be ghosted. And I felt like saying, no, man, this is not, I'm not ghosting you. We just, we, we, we were not a match. There was no connection there. So if that happens to you, don't feel bad. You know, don't feel bad and don't feel like you're being ghosted and don't feel like it's a losing game. It is not. It just means that there was there was not an alignment, there was not a spark, there was not a connection, and that's okay. It's going to happen and be on your way and move on to the next one. So ghosting is one thing, flakiness is one thing, and it's a really good red flag for you to pay attention to. And non-connections are just that. They're just non-connections, non-experiences. Don't let it trip you up. But do stay focused on your flags. And it's not a bad idea to get your journal out right now and write down what some red flags are for you, what some green flags are for you, and then leave a blank page for some white flags when they come along as you're dating and, and journal about them, write about them. How does it make you feel? What do you think? Uh, what's, what's the reflection that you have about this? You know, Give yourself some time and space to pause and reflect. It's all about the long game, folks, dating dating in the middle of life. It is a numbers game. And so I want you to stack the deck in your favors. Okay. Until next time, everybody. Talk to you later. Bye.